here. Okay, so we've covered all of this um, migration and all of that. Um, this final um, site to site, um, it, as I understand the question, it's going to be the same idea. Let me bring the notes back up. Um, let me pull that up here. So we were talking about all of this was um, localhost to GoDaddy. So just some notes on notes on uh, site to site transfer. This answer is going to depend on what kind of uh, migration or transfer you want to do. If you want to, so let's say, uh, replace an existing site with a new site, or uh, replace features. Yeah. What about, what about a new domain? Like say you create a, like in his, his situation, in my situation, say, say, say that you just create a new domain for that customer, uh, even if it's uh, the name of the customer plus test.com, right? Mm -hmm. Cost you 10 bucks. Now you're able to bring all those files, that whole website, into this new domain. Mm -hmm. How would you get that exact website into this brand new domain? Would you delete everything else in there and then bring it in? What's your best way to take a customer site? onto a new platform so you can goof around with it and see if you can find a way to save them money in the economy. Hmm. In that case, it is very similar to what we talked about over here. All of this going from localhost to uh, the server. So if you've got a site that already exists, so let, let's say um, from live site to testing domain. And, and then both from testing domain to live. Uh, all of uh, many of these, well, let me put it in order like this. These, these last three here, in my eyes, are almost the same process as this first part from localhost to real server. The one of replacing is a little different. But let's, let's talk about it in general, then I'll write it down. The idea from here, for example, OK, you've got a client's life site. You want to, to mess with it on a testing domain. Well, on the testing domain, it's going to need a database, just like I had up here. You're going to need to copy the existing live site um, to transfer it over there. You're going to copy that the same one with duplicator. You're going to use duplicator on that live site. You, you install the duplicator plugin on the live site. You make the backup of it. You download it all to your desktop. And then on that other testing domain, you use the file manager or some other uploading software to upload it to the testing server. That's very similar to what I had uh, up here. Where does it go in that, uh, in that testing server? How do you know you get it in the right spot? It should not be ambiguous. If you set up the testing domain and you know, on a different account or on a subdomain, it should be obvious where you're uploading it because one server, one folder path is going to be this site and another one's going to be that site. This one's going to be called, you know, mainsite.com and this is going to be something else, like you said, testing domain $10.com. So it's going to be completely different servers. So it shouldn't be where am I uploading it to. You should be seeing. Well, that server, I'm looking at a server and it's full of folders, right? Yeah. So you are going to, I would assume it would go to, just from what I learned in the class, it would go to the public underscore HTML folder. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just where WordPress yeah. is. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can, we can note to that just for completeness. Uh, oftentimes. So if I'm downloading to the Dropbox, would it be this, I could access that file to the Dropbox or no? Let me just write this note here. Oftentimes on a real server, you use public HTML instead of www folder. Now throwing in Dropbox to further put variables into the question. 
So you're saying that uh, you put what's Dropbox doing again? What did you say about Dropbox? No, I, I set my, yeah, my backups to Dropbox. It's oh, yeah. Online site backup. Yeah. So I just want to get that folder, that file is already backed up on Dropbox into this new. That one's going to be still about um, downloading it from Dropbox to your desktop. It's still going to be that, taking it off of Dropbox into your desktop, and then from the desktop, uploading up to the testing domain. So that's very useful. If you guys haven't looked into it, um, the Duplicator Pro version lets you make a backup of your site directly into Dropbox, or OneDrive, or Google Drive, and such. We have to look at it on your computer because uh, we made a setting change when you've got when you when you're about to create a backup there was a check mark that we switched so if you want to look at it on your own but we'll look at it in a moment there is a s setting there somewhere I think they call it there's a little box that says storage change that over from Dropbox to desktop whatever it is we'll look at it in a moment but this idea from a site to another domain is very similar to that. Now, the opposite is also going to be very similar. If I'm working on victortesting.com and I want to put it into the real victorsbakery.com, a variation of what we talked about here is also going to happen. From victortesting.com, I need to make a duplicator backup of the whole site, download it to the desktop, and then uh, upload it in cPanel back over to the live server. Uh, also, assuming you need to create the database on the new server, upload it to the new server, go to the installer on the new server, and follow those steps. So it, maybe it makes more sense like, well, I've got this file on my flash drive, and I've got the desktop on the computer. But this is very similar in that, well, I've got a flash drive, and I want to put it onto a computer. It's still just locations that you're putting digital files somewhere. But if I've got it on the flash drive, putting it to this computer, it's synonymous to moving it from one server, one computer, to another server, another computer. Because a server, a web server, is just a special kind of computer that connects to the internet where you upload your files and such. So the idea here is um, move the duplicator backup, not move copy. backup files from one server to another using the same process from localhost to real server. I, I can't go into complete detail into most of these because it depends on what people have. I've got Bluehost and, your screen, and my screen doesn't look the same as yours. Or I've got a certain tier in my service provider that doesn't have this option. There is no file manager. They have to have me use uh, FileZilla. So I, I can't quite like record a step-by-step -step of most of these because it's going to depend on everyone's particular um, setup. But, but does that make sense in general? This one is also replace an existing site with a new site. Um, just the same thing. Uh, copy the files of one account or, or one site to another site, another server. The one about replacing features. This is, this is a little more complicated because depending on the features, is it a theme? Is it a uh, a plugin, like you know, what what is that feature that I'm trying to copy to the other site? You do have the ability uh, to copy themes from one site to another or plugins to the other, but usually the way that's done is usually by copying the uncompressed folder from one server to another into the same location. On the server, you often have my site.com slash wp-content slash themes, 
or plugins. And so I would upload the folder of this cool theme from one site into the folder in the same place on the other site. Or the plugin, I would move the, the, whole, the whole folder from site to site. And then that would be transferring a particular feature of one site to, to another. Uh, it does require, like the file manager or FileZilla app or Dreamweaver software, that sort of thing, something to upload to the server. Both, yeah. All right, any other questions on this? Even though there still could be other things to be covered, I think we've covered a lot in these eight class sessions. There's still more to learn. Uh, I'm going to wind down the lecture in just a moment. We'll have a little lab time and such. But uh, again, as I said that, if you didn't know any WordPress, uh, I think you've learned a lot. There's still more to learn. If uh, you did have some knowledge in WordPress, you still probably learned a few things here and there. There's still this advanced stuff. Uh, but then that's why if, you, if you're trying to do it yourself, it gives you a more sense of power and control over your own site, over your own destiny. If you're going to uh, hire some company, uh, now you have perhaps some of the terminology and the jargon to know, to talk intelligently with who you're going to hire so that they don't try to uh, oversell you something or just uh, um, exaggerate their skills or what you're going to get from hiring them. So it works both ways there. And I hope then uh, you apply this stuff in the real world. You're welcome to take the class again when it's offered next time. I know that um, practice makes perfect. I know for myself, like I learned uh, years ago, I learned Adobe Illustrator. I haven't picked it up in years. So if you drop me into Illustrator right now, I don't know what to click on and I don't know what to do. Even though I took a class on it and got a good grade, I, just, I haven't used it. So you use it or you lose it. Practice with localhost, try it on a testing account and such and, and just practice with it or hire someone but then now you have the knowledge to help you understand what they're talking about.